We're going to recrystallize benzoic acid, and this is our apparatus we're going to use. So we've got um, over here, uh, we've got a sample of benzoic acid, which is here. There's actually one gram of benzoic acid in this sample. And this is, um, this is uh, got some impurities inside it. So the whole point of this uh, experiment is to recrystallize this. So this is already crystalline. It's what came out of the experiment. But when it crystallized, impurities got trapped inside the crystal. So what we're going to do is dissolve this up in water and then uh, and we can do that by heating so put it in water heat it up uh, it boils it dissolves then we're going to cool it down but we're going to cool it down really slowly and the reason for this is that the crystals when they precipitate out will precipitate out slowly and so they won't entrap the impurities within them so it's called a recrystallization because you're taking crystals dissolving and then crystallizing them again but more slowly so this is my benzoic acid, it's one gram, and if I look, my instructions are over here. First thing says, uh, weigh out one gram, done that. Put it into 250 ml conical flask. It says add two to three anti-bumping granules. Um, when you're heating things up with water, adding anti-bumping granules is useful sometimes because it prevents big bubbles coming up from the bottom, but actually we're not gonna bother today. So we're just gonna uh, get it all together, 50 ml, and um, put my benzoic acid in, heat it on the hot plate. Hot plate's here. Um, remember, don't, when the hot plate is hot, none like a cooker, it won't glow or anything. You won't know it's hot. Don't put your fingers on uh, if you want to see if it's on, because you'll burn yourself. So um, I'm going to get that going now. So I've now added the benzoic acid into the flask with the 50 ml of water. And you can see it there's at the bottom of the flask. I've turned the heater on and I'm going to turn it up, um, just heat it maybe to 200. Uh, really what I'm waiting for is it to, to start boiling in here. The solution is now starting to boil and there's just a little bit of benzoic acid left. So we just need to allow it to boil a little a little bit until all the benzoic acid has dissolved. So there we are, everything has now dissolved and so now we need to uh, turn the heater off and then remove this and allow it to cool. So I've taken it away off the hot plate and I'm take the stirrer out and I just put a lid on just so it doesn't evaporate too much. And now we just wait until the whole sample is dissolved. What I, meant to, what I meant to say is just wait because now it's going to cool down. But we don't want it to cool down quickly. We're just going to allow it to cool down slowly uh, to room temperature. So we're just going to leave it maybe for 10 minutes until it's fully co uh, cooled. So I've left it to cool to room temperature and if I put them on a, a dark surface you can possibly see there's some nice flaky crystals in there. These are uh, quite big ones and there. You want, don't want tiny crystals, you want crystals to grow slowly and big and nice and flaky. And this is a benzoic acid in there. So this is my ice bath. I've added a little bit of water inside it and I'm just going to finish off the last little bit of any bit of recrystallization to take place. I'm going to cool it down uh, without the glass falling over. There we go. I'm just going to leave that for five minutes more. And this will, um, um, any benzoic acid left in the solution will crystallize out. Okay, I'm going to go over and turn the vacuum pump on, on one of the sockets where it says vacuum pump. Um, this is my vacuum, we're just going to see if it's on. There's the tap, I'll turn it on to positive. You see that sucking sound, that the vacuum's on, so I know it's on. Put the tube back on. I'm going to wet the filter paper slightly. And this means that when I pour my solution on top of it, bits of crystals aren't going to want to uh, get sucked underneath the, the uh, filter paper. So the filter paper is nicely uh, sucked onto the apparatus. Turn the vacuum on. 
you can see bits chopping through and I'm going to filter my solution. Try and give it a good swirl to get as much as possible out of the flask in there. So there's a little bit left at the top which I'm going to get a little bit of cold water and, and swirl that and get that out. All my product is now in there. What I want it to do is I want to dry as much as possible on the vacuum um, because then it will be easier to dry it in the oven afterwards. So I'm just sitting there you know, trying to get the last little bits of water off. I'll leave that for a couple of minutes. Right, well as my sample is, is drying on the vacuum, I'm going to go and take my watch glass, which I'm going to put the sample on, and I'm going to weigh it. Okay, it says 42.79 grams. So, I'm just going to weigh uh, it again. So, this time it says 43.52 grams. So, this is my watch glass plus my benzo purified benzoic acid and a little bit of water because it still needs to be dried in the oven. So 43.52 grams. Just taking it out of the oven and re it again and it says 43.49. So it's lost 0 0.03 grams in five minutes. So it's, it's, I'm going to leave it a little bit longer but it looks like it's it. We need to wait until it's, um, it's constant weight in the oven and then you know it's completely dry but I think it's nearly there. So what we're trying to do is, what we need to do is we need to get the mass of the recrystallized benzoic acid. We need to record the melting point of the recrystallized benzoic acid. And we also need to record the melting point of the original crude benzoic acid. So that's our objectives. So it's been in the oven a bit longer and it now says 43.48. So we're going to take that as the final weight of the watch glass and the dry benzoic acid. 43.48 grams. Okay, so we've got the weight of the watch glass, the weight of the watch glass with a bit of water, but our final weight is that one. So if we subtract those two readings, we find we've got 0.69 grams of benzoic acid. So remember, we start out with a gram. We will have lost a little bit of material along the way. There's still some left in the jar. There will have been some left on the filter paper, and some will have been impurities. So, um, but this is our final amount of benzoic acid. So what's left is I'm going to put it into this tube, um, and then I'm going to get a sticky label. Actually, it's sticky only if it's wet, but don't wet with your tongue or anything. Just get, uh, go over the tap, get a little bit of wet on your finger. Uh, you can write on it first, and then it's going sticky, and then you can stick it onto your tube. Like so. As you can see, I've been scraping bits of my sample into the tube but I've missed a bit, which isn't very good practice. So there's a better way of getting your sample into the tube. So there's a, a round piece of filter paper, they're in the lab. Get one, fold it in half, and then um, put your sample and scrape it onto the paper. So there it is, it's onto my paper. And then from this, because it's got the nice fold, you can fold it again. It's much easier then to get it and tap it, tap the paper, then it's one handed, tap it, and it should go all the way in and you shouldn't spill. So there we have it, there's my sample. Um, can you get it close up or not? There we are, nice looking sample, nice flaky crystals. I can get it focused again. Yeah. So all that remains is, remember the melting point of the crude and of this purified sample. I know it's 0.69 grams in weight. Okay, here is the melting point apparatus. I'm going to set it, currently it's saying 22 degrees. 
it's presumably something similar to this room. I'm going to press, if it's already on, I'm going to press stop. Um, so none of the lights are on here. And then I'm going to press this one, which is set, and I'm going to press it. And I'm going to take it up to, for this particular sample, I'm going to take it up to 135. So this is for bentoic acid, I'm going to take it to 135. Okay, it says 136, but not to worry. And then I'm going to press start. And now this is just going to go up from 23 degrees C until it gets to 135. So whilst it's doing that, I'm going to prepare my sample. These are capillary melting point tubes. With a long, um, a little tube, thin tube of glass. So, see over here, um, there's the best ways to see it, maybe over here, there's a piece of glass and there's my fingers, at this end it's closed and at this end it's uh, an open tube. So we've got to try and get our sample, some of our sample, into the open tube. And the way we do that is, if we take the lid off my sample, um, turn the sample so the open tube is down and I tap the open tube onto my sample and what I'm hoping to do is some of the sample as I, without breaking the tube, you're tapping it down some, if you can see, it's gone into the open tube so that's plenty of sample in there now what I do is I turn the sample so that the open tube faces upwards and I just lightly tap, in fact um, I can bounce it. You can see already some going down to the bottom. You just need to keep gently tapping until your sample at the top is falling down to the bottom. Okay, I've got plenty of sample at the bottom of the tube. So I'm now going to place it into the melting point apparatus. Notice it's 103. I know that's not high enough to melt it, so um, I should be okay. I'm going to place it in and it's hard to see with a phone. I'll try and position it so you can. You can see, I'll move it in and out. There you go, that's the, uh, you might just be able to see the bottom of the tube with some sample. Actually, if I rest it on it, maybe that's best. There, there's the bottom of the tube. So that's what I'm looking at at the moment. It's uh, white, so that's because the samples are solid and it's not melted. I'm trying to get it so it's focused. So it's in the tube, I'm watching it, it's still white. It says 115 degrees, it's going up to 116, 17. You can't see the temperature, but I can. 18, 19, 20. I'll keep reading now and then we see when it melts. 22. 23, 24, 125 degrees C, 106, 127, 128, 129, 130, 131. Can you see it's melting now? 131. Started melting about 130, and now it's complete. So one of the students prepared this one. Uh, they've got uh, their melting points for the crude as being 127 to 131 and they got their pure sample which is in the sample jar of 130 to 132 degrees C and they found a weight of their pure sample is 0 0.70 grams and I got 0 0.69 so we're pretty much in agreement uh, here so it looks as though looking at this that the crude lowered the melting point ever so slightly uh, with the pure one being a little bit higher so that sample is now uh, was prepared by another student, but that was fine. Uh, that's what they wanted. So they found, in summary, they found the mass, they found the crude melting point, and the pure melting point. And hopefully, with this recrystallization, then any impurities um, uh, will not have been uh, incorporated into the benzoic acid in the pure product. And that is how you recrystallize benzoic acid. Now, there's lots of other things you can recrystallize, uh, and you don't have to use water as a solvent. There's lots of other solvents. It all just depends on what solvent 
your uh, product dissolves and re-precipitates in and how easy that is.